Hi there and welcome to another podcast for Grey Golfers and today I'm pleased to say that even on these strange times we've managed to set up a podcast with Head of Golf Mizuna Imiya, which is Rob Jackson. Hi Rob, how are you doing? I'm oh, good too, how are you? Yeah, pretty good, thank you. In these strange times, these are yes, COVID yes, yes, times, yes. how are you finding things? Yeah, um, yeah. well it's, uh, as you say, strange times. It's lockdown number three now, isn't it? So, um, but this one seems to be this one seems to be a bit longer, but uh, um, but the golf trade seems to be very resilient. People love playing golf, so I'm sure once, um, once we're through this, people will be out itching to play again and, and getting back on the golf course, so... So, yeah. Yeah, I'll bet. I mean, (laughs) tell me about it. And I bet it's been a bit strange for you, seeing as I know that your factory's up in Scotland and your headquarters is in England. So, has that been a bit tricky for you? Yeah. yeah, a little bit to start with, you know. So our office is based down in uh, in Winnowsh near Reading, down in Berkshire, but our uh, assembly factory is in Scotland in Cumbernauld. So um, um, we made the cho- made the decision quite quickly to close the the factory because basically the the way we work out there is it's based on a Japanese process called kaizen. So the the machines are very close together, the staff are very close together, and it's all to do with maximum efficiency of moving the moving the parts, the club parts, quickly between every person on the on the line if you like for maximum okay. efficiency so obviously when the um the first lockdown came that sort of all went out the window so we had to uh, close the factory down move all the machines away put the the screening around etc etc et to make it safe for everyone so um and then the um the scottish uh, government was slightly different to what the what the english government was saying in regards to come back to work so yeah it presented its challenges um but uh, we overcame it. We were closed for about seven weeks. But uh, um, you know, the, during that time, particularly from continental Europe, some of those countries stayed open, and Scandinavia, in particular, the golfers' season was booming there. So we had a lot of orders to c- catch up on. And I have to say, ever since um, middle of May, the golf, golf, um, the golf demand for Mizuno product has been um, phenomenal, really. So yeah, very pleased about how it's gone, considering. You know, middle of middle of April, we were looking at virtually nothing, no sales yeah. on the books. To suddenly, uh, we had a we had a really strong year in 2020. In fact, a record year. We're just sort of finalising the numbers now. We had a record year. So, oh good. Yeah. So it shows that um, you know golf is strong. Uh, people want to play golf, and and the brand is in a very strong position as well at the moment, which is uh, yeah, which is very pleasing. Yeah, but that's always very good to hear. So just before we sort of go into your product and things like that. Let's have a quick talk about you and how long you've been with Mizuno and your journey with them. Oh, Christ, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a long time, Stu. I've been with Mizuno <laughs> 21 years now. I joined in December 1999. Um, that's when we first met. I that's right. I was a, I was a uh, sales rep in the southeast, so... Yeah, you were down at Lid. Lid that's right. Yeah, that's it. Well uh, remembered. So I did. Yeah, I did four years. Four years on the road as a rep, and then um, I did a marketing diploma, at Chartered Institute of Marketing, to get off the road. Really, so I didn't fancy being a rep for the rest of my days, and went into the marketing department, and then did some sales and marketing. Um, took over the Scandinavia division, etc. And then about five years ago, we merged everything together. So I was always on the UK side for, for golf, and now we're, we, we're EMEA, Europe, Middle East, Africa, so everything's together. So I sort of um, run that with, in terms of uh, overseeing the sales and the marketing and the production facility up in Scotland. But I have a very strong team underneath me, so um, I just let them go on a bit, really, and, <laughs> and uh, just give them a bit, little bit of direction, and, um, and um, off we go. So we're all, we're all one big happy family in Mizuno, in terms of one Europe, all working together That's good. for the same goal, and it's um, touch wood. It's all going, um, it's all going, going pretty well at the moment. Excellent. Yeah. Well, you seem pretty happy with with, with, with things, which, which obviously is quite good. Um, yeah. Okay, so grey golfers, and I know I've explained to you a little bit about it. So grey golfers, we set up the, the podcast and YouTube. It was sort of on the back of me actually having a custom fit with my new set of Mizuno's, and as I said, I went from having stiff shaft for the last I don't know, 25 years to actually being fitted for regular shafts, which I couldn't believe. Then went out and played with them and I hit the ball further I've done in, in years. And that sort of got me thinking the fact that, okay, if that happens to me, then this can happen to a lot of other golfers as they get slightly older and slightly greyer. Um, yeah. and, and we need to look at equipment and that. Now, Mizuno is definitely known as the players' club. You know, the I think it was like a bunch of it. Mizuno, you, you never go to anything else because they are beautiful. But your range is bigger and better than that these days. Uh, and it does cater for 
not just the good players, but for the ladies and, and the senior golf as well, or as I like to call them, the great golfers. So, what you know, what in your range is, is good for the great golfers, and how can you see your stuff helping them? Yeah, we have, um, just speaking about irons, you know, we have a, a wide range of irons. So we have the MP brand and the JPX brand. So, um, you know, typically MP has been aimed at sort of the better golfer and JPX has been the sort of game improvement brand. But there's a bit of crossover there in that the new hot me- HMB, the hot muscle, hot muscle um, blade, is a very forgiving MP iron, if you like, and the JPX Tour is more aimed at the better player. So there's a bit of cross in, 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 in the middle there. But generally speaking, we have sort of seven, seven models in the range um, and we alternate the MP and JPX launches. So every year you'll have irons which can suit pretty much players of all abilities. But I think what's unique to Mizuno from a, from a custom fitting perspective is we have the swing DNA. So we have what's called a, a shaft optimizer, and the shaft optimizer doesn't know who's swinging it. So there's no uh, this preconceived idea that if you're a lady, you need a lady shaft. If you're a grey golfer, for example, you need a senior shaft, etc. So it will measure your swing characteristics in terms of um, ball speed, but more importantly, how you how your swing loads the shaft throughout throughout the swing. So, and that can then determine what shafts you need. So when you said there, you know, you had regular shafts and previously you've been stiff, it might well be that there are some very, if you like, stiff regular shafts and there's some more flexible stiff shafts. So yeah. It would almost match the weight of the shaft to how you swing the golf club. So um, the swing DNA is a very unique thing there. So, but it, 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 it doesn't know who's swinging it. So it would give you a, um, you know, a very... Um, Honest opinion. Answer, yeah. 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 And then, um, as you say, as, as everyone gets a bit older, then we lose a bit of elasticity in the muscles and the, you know, the back hurts a bit more than it used to and the muscles <laughs> ache a bit more. So I think, generally speaking, as we do get older, we cannot generate the cut head speed as, as, as much as we used to. And then the, the, the fitting and the equipment that we would recommend um, would probably take that into effect. It might say, you know, if you're buying a set of irons for the next five years or so, we would take that into, into effect. So there's, lot, there's lots of factors which go into recommendation. But it all starts with getting the swing DNA right um, so that we know that the shaft we're recommending, along with the most the head design for your playing ability, is sort of right for you, your needs currently, but also you know the next two, three years or however long you're thinking of, um, of um, buying a set of irons for. And that also has repercussions because that thing, you can there, it can recommend uh, uh, a starting point for your woods. Yeah, I was just about to say that. So yeah. the string DNA really is the start of everything. It can recommend a set makeup and it measuring, it's measuring all sorts of things like angle of attack, for example, for hybrids to make sure you've got your hybrids matched and also your wedges as well. So it's a, it's a good start to, to, you know, if you're looking, thinking of considering of getting fitted for. With Mizuno irons, we start with the irons, and then we can add to either side of the bags with the wedges and and, and the woods. Yeah, no, I mean that that was one thing that I found that it did. I've never had so many woods in my bag as well. I mean, I think my longest iron is a five, is a five iron at the moment, but I might pull yeah, that out and yeah, only go with yeah. six. And that's been you know that's been a trend which has been coming. You know the um, the the irons have strengthened over the years. You know, so you know what what is now. You know, we've still got a number four on it, but probably. Back in our day, when we 20 years ago, oh. we probably had a, a two iron. Exactly. But, uh, and the wedge, the pitching wedge, is now sort of you know, but almost where an eight iron used to be. Yeah. So the gut wedges and, and the wedges part of the bag is coming in, and also the hybrids and the um, and the fairy woods are, are taking up more of that end of the bag. Although with Bethino you know, being a predominantly an iron an iron company, we we are looking at that as well. So we have um, JPX fly highs, which are the the same length and um, and. And liars and iron, so we call them the DLRs, the direct long iron replacements. Okay. So you, you can have those in your bag, which are which are very useful clubs. So they've got a they've got a, a wood type or hybrid type um, shaped head on them, but the 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 length and the lie of the shaft is very much like a, just like it would be for a long iron. So that's there. And then with the new um, launches coming out, we're looking to uh, sort of beef up the long iron offering as well. So if you do prefer, a lot of golfers still like the old um, long irons, but we're making them as, as easy to hit as we can with um, a wider offering on the shaft front to, to suit all needs. So it's all, there's a lot of stuff going on with the development and, and, um, and so on to say, to adapt to all players' needs. And I also notice that you've got the newer wedges out that have helped move the uh, is it the the sweet spot more in, in into the centre of, of of the club, which is yeah. a great idea, yeah, we isn't it? The, um, the ES twenty one series um, only in September, so that's uh, that's been something which has been on the cards. I remember you know doing testing on that maybe four or five years ago. The initial thinking about that was to to get a more um, 
a wedge which was more more helpful for, for, for bad lies, you know, to try and get you out of some of those lies you found around the green. So yeah. um, they found that moving the centre of gravity up into the centre of the club, of the club was, a, was a big help there, um, which allows you to, 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 to mould the head shape slightly differently. So if you're looking at it from the, from the back, it looks in certain areas there's a lot of weight redistributed compared with a traditional wedge. But from the playing address position, it still like, looks like a, a Mizuno, not a bladed wedge, but it, it, it looks like a player's wedge if you like. But you've got a lot going on behind which you can which you can see. But yeah, it's a very uh, it's an excellent wedge, particularly if your short game isn't quite as what it used to be to help with uh, to help spin the ball. The yeah, no, I've I've got those wedges in my bag and I love them. I mean, I I, yeah. I think that yeah. to say that you know, to, to I mean, I think they look as good uh, as the other ones. I mean, I because well, I'm very much a cosmetic. Yeah, yeah, with the all the all black finish. And, yeah. And, uh, Black shaft, but, uh, and I think the beauty about um, Mizuno's wedges is they are grain flow forged, so the same technology which goes into making our irons feel great and, and consistent off the club face carries through into all of our wedges. You know, they're all grain flow forged. The T, the T20 series, the S21, they're grain flow forged, which means you get that same feel. And more importantly, the same distance um, yeah. and dispersion benefits of a forged iron. Um, so I think in the short game, you know, from you know, that's where you really need that benefit, that softness, that feel, and that um, consistency of, of the, the ball coming off the off the club in a consistent way. So, yeah, the Mizuno wedge is a, a very strong category for us, and it's quite nice to see that ES21 come in as, a, as more of a... Uh, um, we don't do a gap wedge in that, interestingly, because that, ben- that really is the benefit for the, the gap and the, and the and the log wedges, if you like. So yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's, it, in the old days, when we used to say we'd, we'd launch an S wedge, it would have cannibalised the T wedges, you know, because people would have seen it as a new wedge. So it's more of an extension of the wedge offering as opposed to a direct replacement for what we've already, already got. Right. So the brand sort of grown massively, hasn't it, tried to accommodate every sort of level of golfer, yeah. not just the good yeah, players? I think, I think Right, I mean, um, you know, we do everything. I mean, that's the sort of, beauty about Mizuno. Is I know probably it's, I mean, every brand's probably known for something, isn't it? So Mizuno's yeah. strength has always been irons and, and wedges off the back of that. But we do, you know, we often do words. We bought the putters out now, the M Craft putters. Um, footwear is, is, we're back in with the footwear. And Mizuno is a global sports company. We do, we do footwear for pretty much every single sport you can think of. So yeah. that's a huge part of our business. We do clothing, we do gloves, we do golf balls, we do bags, we do accessories. So we do the whole, pretty much the whole range, apart from sort of trolleys, I guess, um, under under the same Mizuno um, umbrella. So it's, uh, yeah, and it's, um, as I say, because of the, we don't distinguish between ladies' golf, we don't have ladies-specific clubs or anything like that. It's all done by the swing DNA. So the, the heads that a lady golfer or a senior golfer will, will put into their golf clubs are exactly the same heads that, you know, Luke Bonnell will play on yeah. top of, you know, so we do, there's no, we don't differentiate that way, it's the same head. So it, it, it's, it's the really shaft, so the DNA gives the shaft, the right shaft, the right golfer to load up to get the most power and the most forgiveness and sort of distance and accuracy from, which is good. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, and then, you know, we don't, we, so, and as I say, the heads are all the same, they're all the same heads, but yeah, it'll be, with the tour shaft, you know, they might do certain different grinds at, 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 to, you know, particularly they're on the wedges you know so certain pros like, like more specific grinds so the guys can grind the wedges in a, in a slightly different way there which is which is you know which is different and there's there'll be some shafts on the trail track there which we might not do for our normal custom water program because they're quite niche, um, niche. Yeah. but uh, generally speaking the, the product which we, we make is for the tour players is the same stuff that every golfer every dog golfer can, can buy and the swing DNA just helps you choose because there's, there's so much to choose from. I mean, God, that's the thing. The shafts we do, all the grips we do, and other things yeah. like that. So the swing, the swing DNA really delves it down to give you a right based on your swing um, characteristics. These are the these this are the is the perfect one for you. Go to try and, and we work on that. Yeah, so it's a, it's a great uh, it's a great fitting tool. And obviously, I'll say this, but I recommend everyone to um, to start there as, a, as their starting point. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. And one thing I will say as well is that your driver. I mean, talk I me. Mean, you are not known for, for for making drivers, but I got your one, and my it must have gone twenty, thirty yards longer. No word. So yeah, you finally it's, it's got it's a great one because, out there. Um, I think that we've always made fantastic drivers. There's no doubt about that. But I think the perception may have been that um, when it comes to a tour, we've we've always been very focused on making sure that our players play the irons. You know, so um, we've often had you know nine or ten clubs. 
minimum club contract. So it's, it's left the driver and the fairway wood, if you like, at the putter free okay. for, for players. And it's always been a case of, well, if we get the irons nailed down, then we'll work with them on the driver. But, um, but we've changed that a little bit now. We've got, you know, uh, Brooks Cooker, for example, he's, um, he's one of our non-contracted players. Yeah. So he was a guy who put the JPX Tour irons in the bag free choice. Um, we don't actually pay him anything to, to do that, so he's done it by choice. So, That's great. Um, so that what we decided it. to do then is if we've got any contract players now going forward as a, as a sort of tro- a global direction, they've got to play the driver. So it's, it's therefore put the driver out there as to the tour to say we're serious about the product. The product's good because it'll always match up against anything out there, but now we're sort of saying to our tour players that we're serious about this and we want you to, we want you to play it as part of your contract. And, okay. and by and large, everyone has taken it up. So Luke Donald is in the driver, Chris Kirk is in the driver, Keith Mitchell is in the driver. Oh, good. We've got a, a new... A French guy, Adrian Sadier, who's we got big hopes for. Yeah, you know, so, good. so now when you see a Mizuno, you know, bag and Mizuno clubs on tour, you will see the Mizuno driver in there. So, and oh, I think that then spirals down into into you know into retail world. You know, with the with the pros we're calling on, we're, we're, they're, they're now seeing that it's it's more serious. So they're a bit more confident to yeah. to stock it and push it. But the performance is there, no doubt about that. And, yeah, uh, no, it is. Uh, well, yeah, second now, I was very, very. Yeah. I, mean, I, I love the arms, but the driver, I was really impressed with. I have to say. Yeah, and, and again, there, yeah, you know, go back to the, say the grey golfer. We've got three different heads now, so we have okay. the, the G head where you can you've got the weight adjustability, which is a great piece, a great driver to have if you want to, you know, if you want to tinker, shall we say? You know, yeah. You a bit more fade bias, a bit more draw bias, or a bit more higher lawn launch. You can use the weight system there. We got the the new Z driver coming out, which is uh, which is quite a neutral driver in, in terms of, of that. So if you don't really like tinkering around, you just want a, a good looking, clean driver. We've got the Z, and then we've got the X driver. So that's a, an interesting product. That's coming more from um, the Japan and the Korean market, right? Where perhaps they want a bit more effective loft on the driver, so it helps get the ball up in the air. A bit more draw bias. Okay. On it to stop to stop the you know the old cut to the right, which yeah. is which, which we're prone to hit every now and again. So so that's come in as a more of a um, from the Japanese career market, which those sort of golfers like over there. That's come into the Western market, and um, and just goes to show that there's golfers on tour who who like that. So Chris Kirk is one of our players. He put the X driver in really? the bag, you know, and you never would have really sort of thought that, you know, no. if you didn't have the fitting. So we've got three heads there, and again, all those three heads can cater for any level of golf, uh, any ability, um, any gender, you know, and, and any age. If we're talking about you know the older yeah. guys, there, there's three heads to choose from. And we'll, you know, we can get we can get the right shaft and head combination to 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 see what you to see what you're after. Good. Okay, so that's great. So, what we're saying is that everything in Mizuno can accommodate great golfer. We sort of should add. Doesn't mean you're old and slow and anything else like that. Because there's plenty of older boys that knock it miles past me these days. Oh, yeah. But yeah, 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 the yeah, DNA yeah, yeah, will give yeah, them yeah, the perfect yeah. fitting, and that's what we like to hear. Yeah, I think I think you know we don't we don't prejudge anything, you know. So no. it's not a case as I said earlier. You no, know, if you're a senior, you're a senior flex. I think that's very you know you don't do that at all. We go into every fitting with a you know and well, experienced fitters. They've fitted so many people, they've got a fair good idea. But it will always be an open mind. Yeah. Start with the swing DNA, and then and then we can work from there. And it, it just um, helps validify, um, validate, sorry, the um, the reason why you're choosing something, you know. So, yeah. So, it's a, it's, a, it's a great piece of kit. Oh, good. And how do things see things going forward? Obviously, we've not got another strange year ahead of us. You see golf being busy again, like I suppose it was in the end of last year, or? Well, we're certainly getting. Um, we just all of our sales teams have done the what we call the pre-book for next season. So they've been out, and um, they, they, our, our retail partners are very confident. Put down that we've had a strong pre-box. Of, Pre books across all categories, okay. so it's created a bit of a headache because we've now got to uh, try and find some more product than we thought because it's taken us all a bit by surprise. I think the uh, the popularity and the brand and um, and the the willingness, I guess, of the um, of the retailers to to, to pre book the product, you know, because there's a lot of uncertainty out there. Yeah, of course. But they're pretty confident to put their to put the orders down, which which helps, which means we can go in to the factories and up the orders if we can. Yeah. So yeah, we're looking forward to a, 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 a good year. It, in a way, if this, if, you know, if we are in lockdown and it sort of delays the start of the season for a month, it's not necessarily a, a bad thing, really, because it just gives us a chance to play a bit of catch up. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if everyone's knocking on the door for an early start of the season in February, then it's quite hard to speed the boats up. You know, so uh, yeah, well, of course, especially <laughs> so, at the moment. Uh, if it's, if it's, 
if it is delayed, by, um, it's not the you know, it's not the end of the world as long as we have a you know, an, 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 a nice autumn. Because I think the last couple of years, especially in the UK, we've had some uh, you know, some decent weather going straight in, you know into October, November. So the season is is, is um, has been prolonged. And you never know, you know, with the Ryder Cup now this year and the Olympics, if it, yeah. if it goes ahead, well, I mean, that's doubtful at the moment from what yeah. I'm reading. But, you know, you might have that um, that surge in the autumn, which would extend the season, which is uh, which is good for everyone. Yeah. Oh, good. So good news for Mizuno here and the brand getting stronger and stronger. So with that in mind, can I nick a prize off you for a, a competition, Rob? You may. You may, sure. Yeah, sure. So we'll, yeah. we'll, what can we... Scrounge off, off your well, I think it, we'll, um, we'll put up one of our uh, tour cart or tour stand bags. So, oh, okay, lo- lo- lovely. So, top of our top of our range there in terms of the bags, but you know, we don't again. We don't want to. If, you, if you're a, a cart player, you might want a cart bag. If you're a carrier, you can go for a okay. for a stand. So we'll put, we'll put we'll put a tour cart and a tour stand. Two colours there: the staff and the black and grey colour. So there's a bit of bit of choice there. Oh, okay, perfect. So what it does will. We'll set a number of subscribers on our channel, and when we get to that number, we'll do a draw of all the subscribers, and uh, we'll notify the lucky winner. That's very kind, Rob. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, so uh, yeah, just let me know who wins, and we'll, we'll sort everything our end. Perfect, Rob. That's been very kind of you to come on and do a podcast with us and have a chat. Uh, we wish you all, all the best this year. Hope you have a busy year, and things are good for the future. Yeah, pleasure to catch up with always, Stuart. So uh, yeah, good luck of all. Cheers, Rob. Take care, mate. Thanks.